No, nope, let's try that again. Good morning. <laughs> it's 9 a.m. on April the 1th, 2024. Now I'll turn off the bot repeating messages if I find where to do that. Yeah, right there. Yeah, April the 1th. I had all kinds of fixes today, all kinds of changes because it, it's just it's just time to do that. And and the first change, April the 1th. What, why that you're not used to that? Well, as a recovering Windows technician, I'm 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 going all on board with consistency and stability. People have been mispronouncing days or num even numbers. Today is not F I R S T. Where do they get that from? The day no, it's day number one. Add a TH on the end of that. It's day number one. Five of the nine digits that we deal with are, are said right. So fourth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and then continue on from there. Tenth, eleventh, twelfth, thirteenth. It's the number and then TH people. That's the way you do numbers. Let's get consistent. We're no longer in the Windows world. It's Apple, consistency, stability. So today is the one. Tomorrow is the tooth, followed by the threeth. Then the fourth, but you already know that. You're already accustomed to that, fourth. And then there's the fifth. Say the numbers right. Let's get stable and consistent, shall we? I want that as a recovering Windows technician. That's the title of today's show. Windows technician switches to Apple. Yes. And here's the, the thumbnail for today. Scratch out Windows. We're done with Windows. It's Apple daily. So there. <clears throat> I feel like I've gotten that off my chest. Can we move on? I have a I got it I have a lot to talk about with this computer that we worked on Saturday. That sounds like some Ken Stout Live logic right there with the TIH. Oh well Ken Stout Live, that's another that's another thing we gotta fix. Ken it's he's not Ken Stout, he's grouped. Right? So we've got to fix the name of that show. It's not Ken Stout Live. It's Groot Live in the Zoom Cardigans. Okay? Not Zoom homies. Groot Live and the Zoom cardigans. Why cardigans? Well, because it's mostly old men that are on this show. Old men are prone to wear cardigans, which is a sweater that opens, that has a either a zipper or a button down front. And they, they're, they're, the movies that series that they were from is Cardigans of the Galaxy. So we've got to fix Ken Stout's show's name. It's Groot and the Zoom cardigans. <coughs> Hello, Alice. Alice says she's a young woman. Now, this computer from Saturday, we got a lot to talk about it. This was an Apple Dell Optiplex 755. And we've got some follow-up to do about that. Now, I've got some things, I got some tabs opened up for follow-ups on that. Keeping but be sure face. towards to, to sure towards the end. Be sure that I tell you towards the end my conversation with the client yesterday because I got to fill you in on that too. So where am I going to start? Let's start with channel comments because there's uh, uh, one channel comment and a couple things in email that are follow-ups with this. And then I got to tell you what I did. After the show on Saturday, I shut down the show and it just goes, oh, duh. The, ne the next thing that I, I went ahead and did more work on it, of course, Jim. <clears throat> but not quite what Jim was fearing either. But th it was just real obvious. Just put the computer back in the computer, boot it up to a Mac and Reflect thumb drive and see if I can access the, the, the content. Make a backup image and restore it to somewhere else. So, yeah, I got somewhere with that. Not quite as far as I would like. But anyway, let's go look at let's go look at channel comments about this Apple Dell Optiplex computer. Chris Garrett says I purchased 
a Apple HP Elite book, brand new off old stock off of eBay, very cheap. It came with a Apple Business, Apple Vista Business COA, but has Apple XP Pro loaded from Apple HP. This seller on eBay has some stock. Last time I checked, I I kelp XP Pro installed cloned to an extra SSD I have. Now it's blazing fast. I looked at the hard disk drive of Crystal Disk Info and for sure it was brand new, never used. Came with all the paperwork. It has some documentation about Apple 7 and I'm sure it could run Apple 10, but not that good. It would be a good computer for those people with QuickBooks, another Apple product by the way. Battery is dead, but works when it's plugged in. I like these old systems. That is why I buy them. I will just mess around it. I'll buy them. I will just mess, to mess around it. I could not figure out why it came with a Windows Vista, um, Apple Vista sticker and a Apple Vista COA on the back, but no Apple Vista install, only an Apple HP branded, Apple XP and HP driver's disk. That's why I'm thinking the Dell you were working on was from about that time it may have a Apple XP and a Apple Vista sticker. Well, Chris, um, <clears throat> my observation is that computer, I believe, came when it was manufactured and was being sold by Dell. It started out as Vista, but they also had drivers for XP. Common thing among the major manufacturers is they'll have two different operating systems of, of drivers. The one that was current uh, current or most recent still supported when the computer came out and then the next. So a lot of times when you get a computer that has a sticker on it, it'll be from the original operating system that they had drivers for. But if you're buying it refurbished or something like that, it will commonly have the next level operating system that the manufacturer actually provided drivers for. That's what I have seen. And that actually is the case with this computer because I discovered more about the history of this computer that you do not yet know about. And I need to be sure that I get to that because that's not at a place that I normally would queue it up. So let me go ahead to that right now. So I make sure not to forget about this. I had, I found in my notes that this client, remember I told you husband and wife, she has a, a plant business. She goes around to her business office clients and I, I know her name is shown here, it's okay, authorized. <clears throat> and um, she, you know, swaps out their plants and keeps them alive and healthy and stuff and waters them, all that kind of stuff. Originally, they had a Dell Dimension 2400, and the computer was used for QuickBooks not connected to the internet. So they've been doing that for a long time. That's not this computer. That was from 2013. And then we did this in 2018. The old computer had a hard drive crash, December 2018. So then I delivered a repurposed Windows XP computer to Adam to replace his Apple XP computer due to hard drive crash. I used Data Rescue PC3 to recover his uh, QuickBooks file and then downloaded the Apple QuickBooks Pro 2013 version and that's still the version of QuickBooks that they have on this computer. So this computer has the Windows XP operating system, not Vista, even though the label says that. The computer I gave them without charge was surrendered to eWaste Buy and that, that is a white font in that blank area of the client that this computer was um, re repurposed from. Uh, the computer was used by, and there's white font there that tells who was using the computer. I have that blanked out because that's not authorized to expose. I uninstalled all the law office software and antivirus spyware software, yada, yada. I will install their printer. I did a Macrium backup on my Phantom 6 drive before delivering. The replacement computer is Octoplex 755. My point that I'm making here is I keep notes. I make notes as I'm doing things and it becomes useful <laughs> years down the road. So I have some history information about this. So here's the notes that I've made for yesterday. Hard drive backup is not usable. Three lost clusters reported by backup. I'm going to show you pictures of that. 
Adam can get a recent copy of the QuickBooks from the CPA, so we don't need to do a, a drive recovery on it. I guess I'm mixing in the client's report from here because they did not want to spend the $300 for $300 data recovery to recover it because uh, they can recover well enough from the QuickBooks company files. So I'm not going to spend more time trying to recover it, even though I think it possibly could be. But it's not going to be a big deal for them to recover because the the copy that the CPA has is only a month, a month and a half old, something like that. So not a big crisis. But some more interesting things to show you about this, how this unfolded. Adam wants a replacement computer that can connect to the internet. So now he does want to be able to connect to the internet. I told him I'd find an inexpensive Windows 11 that will do that job. So we're going to be looking for a computer to purchase, Windows 11, probably one of these mini computers that, like what Kerry Holzman has been recently been reviewing on his channel. Macromuflect will mount the backup image, but is unable to read anything from the C drive. And I'm going to be showing you images of that. It is possible further work with the old drive might succeed in recovering company file, but it's not worth $300 to them. So I don't want to pursue per further efforts at this time. So that really gets you up to speed with what is happening here. And I didn't know I was going to use that technique to unfold all that information. Now, before I go on to emails, I'll give Chris a thumbs up and a heart. I'm not going to reply to him because I think he's probably here in chat or he will see this. Matthew Barnes uh, says, hey, Doug, thanks for responding to my comment regarding malware bar by bites. I didn't phrase well what I meant by malware bites blocking ads. Now, before I go on further, let me say kudos to Matthew Barnes. He gets it. He gets it. He gets my frustration with lack of consistency. He did the correct spelling of the word phrase here. Who in the world got the idea that PH would make an F sound? Duh. So thank you, Matthew. I appreciate that. He wrote, spelled the word correctly. <laughs> what I meant was when I go to one of the questionable sites, I'll get a pop-up from Malwarebytes saying, for example, potential threat blocked. Then the domain of the website. Hope this makes sense. Yes, makes perfect sense. I understand what you're saying. Matthew, 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 please take a screenshot. Take a picture with your camera. I don't care how you get it. Just get it. Why does that remind me of a song? Don't care how you get there. Just get there. Somebody's got to know what song that is. But, yeah, send me a picture of that because what I want to do <clears throat> is I want to demonstrate what Windows Defender will go when I go to that site during a live show and show what will happen. I, I don't Defender might catch it and report it, might not. So you've got to give me one of those sketchy, questionable sites and I'll, and I'll do it. Glenn Miller singing that song? No, it's a female voice. I'm thinking uh, it's probably been sung by different people. People have made covers. Alexa, what song has the words, I don't care how you get there, just get there? Here's a mix for you on Amazon Music. Nah. Alexa, stop. Cancel. That didn't work. Consistency in spelling. <laughs> Explained by Doug. That's beautiful, Brian. Awesome. Awesome. All right. I got, I got, I got to show that because... People who are just watching or listening to the video don't 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 see that. But Brian Lightfoot said consistency in spelling exclaim D U G is the proper spelling for Doug, right? Bets would be B E T Z. Bets 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 bets. I think this I think the S sounds right, but not two T's, right? I don't know. I don't know. I only work here. Where was I at? Oh, let's see. So Matthew Barnes got to that. Now, I don't, he doesn't always watch live. Is he here? Matthew Barnes, speak up in chat because he's in like Australia, isn't he? Alexa, what time is it in Australia? I think so. Australia or, has multiple time zones. Oh. In Sydney, it is 3.15 a.m. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's early morning 
Where am I going next? So I'll send him a timestamp just in case he doesn't watch this show specifically. So then in uh, emails, I have these lined up. Um, Martin Hogg was from 11 a.m. this morning. So here's stop. The, the oldest is at the bottom. Let me point out the, the super chat that I said was on Thursday. On Saturday, I said there was a super chat on Thursday that I missed because it, it showed up in OBS before I started the show and then it was gone. I'm pretty sure it was Frankie B. So Frankie B, thank you for that super chat. And that I realized that when I was watching Carrie Holzman's show on Saturday. And um, Frankie B had made a, a super chat there. So I'm pretty sure it was Frankie B. Thank you. Uh, Rob Wilson, the message came in on Saturday saying that I, no, well, it came in on Sunday, March 31st, that I reached a thousand uploads and Ken, Ken, or Groot Stout, <laughs> I got, I, I got a good chuckle out of your, your, your trailer last night. I enjoyed that. You got two loud, definite laugh out, laugh out louds for me, particularly the, the shots that you show, showed oh, sure. at the Oh, sure. Give Rob Wilson credit. Yeah, I'll give Rob Wilson credit what credit was due, but but I came up with something else that I realized afterwards that maybe I could take that back from Ken. Maybe I could take that that Groot Stout, you're right, back because the the um, see what what it says here. You've reached a thousand uploads. The uh, uploads shouldn't include here live streams, right? That uh, uploads. That's not live streams. So I went looking further. I went and looked at the numbers for my uploads and looked at the numbers for my live streams. And Groot, you're, I'm still going to declare you right. I'm still declaring that you are right. And Rob is wrong because I don't have a thousand uploads. My uploads are around 400 some odd. And my, my, my live streams are around 800 some odd. But now, wait a minute, that adds up to 1,200 some. So who's wrong? YouTube. YouTube is YouTube is YouTube. We're going to call it 1,000. We're going to call it Groot Stout was right. Brian says, OMG, Groot was right. Yeah, I'm going to give him, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand, I'm going to support that, affirm that. What do they say in court when something is upheld? I'm going to uphold it. That's what up, when you upheld something, you uphold it. <sighs> Chat. Frosty Winnipeg. Uh, let's see, what's it? No, the oldest one is up here. Ran Israel. Another idea, plug the drive back into the original PC and boot it off of a live USB media to grab the files. Now, I already said that I thought of that as soon as the show ended. Yeah, so did Ran Israel and so did one other that I'm going to get to his email in a, in a moment. So sit tight. I will get to your email because you are waiting to see if I'm going to give you credit as well. And I will. Now, but but a point that, that occurred to me, particularly after the Saturday show, I ended it and I go, duh, put the drive back in and boot it off of a thumb drive to Mac and Reflect and see if you can access the file. And I did not think of that during the show. It was not on my mind during the show. But here Ran Israel did have that in chat during the show, and I didn't see that until after the show. Uh, but but the point comes to me, and I've felt this many, many, many times. My, my brain is not fully engaged in the troubleshooting work while doing a show. It's just, I, I, I've had many times after I end the show, I think some, something goes, wait a minute, duh, why not do this? But my show isn't about me showing you my skills. My show is, I, I feel like I'm more of a moderator, a facilitator, MC to us working on the project as a group. And that's the, that's the thing I wanted to do in the first place. And it's working pretty well, I think. So we got through that. The Bronc 9. Is there any advantage to cloning my C drive, which is one terabyte NVMe, to a 500 terabyte envy me. Anytime you can get people to envy you, you should do that. So if that's gonna help people envy you more, then then absolutely do it. <laughs> All 
All right, but when under what circumstances would you clone from a one terabyte to a 500 gigabyte? Well, I showed that on Saturday on a client's computer. I, they had a one terabyte spinning hard drive that was failing. It was a, 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 a workstation in a office, office environment where all the data is on the server. We don't really care too much about backups on the computer. <clears throat> I had a 500 SSD on hand. So I decided to use it. I also had one terabyte on hand, but that computer did not need a one terabyte. So I did the 500 gigabytes and showed what I had to do in order to accomplish cloning. And I actually did do cloning, not image and then restore the image. I did cloning from one terabyte to 500. I showed how I did that on, on uh, Saturday. Now, is there any advantage? Only if there's some reason, some circumstances that makes you want to do it. You happen to have a 500 gigabyte drive on hand. You don't want to order a one terabyte. You don't need the one terabyte. Is it going to run any faster? No. There, there is, the, the, I did come across documentation at one point that in regards to memory, if you have like, like 256 gigabytes of memory that I have for Big Beast build, right now it's only running on 128 gigabytes. It's severely crippled at 128 gigabytes. But, when the computer boots up, there is some some work that it does on that on that whole 256 gigabytes. So the explanation gave me the notion that my cold boot time might be longer if I have the 256 gigabytes as opposed to the 128 gigabytes. I have not tested that yet. I'd like to. I don't know if I will wind up doing that. But I don't know that there's anything comparable to that with... Um, and in the me drive. So that's that, but, but the advantage would be so minor. So I think the answer to that Bronc nine is no. I don't think anyone was responding to that comment in chat. Frosty Winnipeg, I've seen Macrium fail, expanding the C partition on a 500 gigabyte to one terabyte clone. And yet that should be automatic, easy peasy. And we discussed this on Saturday, but after looking at that again, after the show, I realized that I have seen that happen where I was going from a from a smaller drive to a larger drive and I just clicked through it and did not pay attention and I just clicked the copy button without telling it to automatically fill and it did not utilize the whole drive and I discovered that when I went back later thinking that oh I need to shrink that drive down and use half of it for a backup partition and when I got there, I realized that, oh, I did, it, it just copied over the, the same size and left that extra space free. So I, re, I recall times when it has automatically filled and has times when it has not automatically filled. So I think that perhaps is what Frosty Winnipeg is referring to. Auto shrink and auto expand, he says there, it had to float C in to fill the extra space, just a slower version of easy peasy. Float C. Now, Macrium has a float button, and float means it's going to move the partition to the right side. That's different than clicking on, there's another button about, uh, it's not configure, It's it, there's another button that lets you get into a graphic where you can drag the right border of the partition to make it larger. Okay, so there. And that takes care of all of those. Now let's get back to my list of emails. That was just chat. So there's the Rob Wilson 1000. There's the Frankie B. And then here's Martin Hogg's uh, email from this morning. Uh, Hi, Doug. Please forgive me if I speak rubbish. Yeah, this looks like English to me. But thinking about your client's PC running Apple Vista operating system and the extracted hard drive not being detected on Baby Beast. Is it possible that if the drive is again installed and Apple Vista recognizes it, that you could clone or image that drive to another external USB drive, enabling you to access and copy the desired files? I seem to remember that you listened to the drive with a stethoscope and it was running okay. Correct about that. So Macrim could be run from a USB 
and possibly see the hard disk drive and an external SSD as a destination drive worth a try, perhaps. Yes, absolutely. Good idea. Way to go. And then let's go here to the pictures. So here's the first in this set of pictures of going down this route. route. Uh, route 66, uh, that one and then F11 to make it take up full screen. So I did this picture this way just to show that on this screen I'm accessing the CMOS. The BIOS setup on this computer was really interesting. It's an old computer, you know it's an old computer. We know that it's got this high-end drive. Now, where was, where was all the comments that people were making about what a, I, I guess I didn't copy them from the chat room. I think there's a lot of activity in the chat room that this is, this is really in its day, 10,000 RPM and having this heat sink and a fan under it. it it's kind of a high-end drive and it's a high-end computer. And what happened is that law office client that this computer came from, when they bought the computer, they did spend big money. They had, they had bought top-level equipment at that time. This is an old BIOS setup, and see, there's only a, a, a few sections there expanded. You see, there's a lot of options in this BIOS. Now, at this point, I just have the hard drive connected. If somebody could let me know in chat. This, well, Kerry, has, it's Monday, so he has a members only. Ken Stout, is there, do you have a show this morning that I need to redirect to? Here's a closer. It has TPM security on this old computer. And you see a bunch of other stuff that's available in here. I'm not going to go through all of it. It's just this is unusual BIOS setup for such an old computer. And I came into here looking for how to get it to boot from the USB drive, I think, is why I, I'm not. Let's see, it wouldn't boot off of the hard drive. I don't know if I was going in here to for any particular purpose, but here's CompuTrace. This, this lets you... Um, be able to wipe this computer. If somebody steals the computer, you could wipe it over the internet by using this CompuTrace service. No show until the regularly scheduled show. Got it, Ken, thank you, or group. Whichever you go by by now. I don't know what name you're going using these days. Uh, let's see, so it does passwords. And passwords actually for the drives. You can have separate drive, uh, pass, separate passwords for the different drives on this system. It's uh, it was configured for AHCI because that's something that could prevent a computer from booting if some person who thinks they're a technician gets to messing around and tries. Well, I want to try running it on a different SATA operation and switches. That'll stop it from booting. Lucky thing is, you can switch it back and, and fix that. But I was certain this client doesn't has never gone into that. <clears throat> so once I realized how much stuff is in here, I just decided, well, let's go take a few other pictures. And internal diskette drive, does this have one? Oh, yeah, it has a three and a half inch diskette drive and it has a CD drive. CD or, yeah, DVD. <coughs> you can disable floppy drives, you can, um, so you it's, you could password protect BIOS setup and turn off USB ports. You can turn off individual USB ports, so front USB, rear dual USB, rear quad USB, so you can, can tr disable different ports to really secure this computer because this is a enterprise level computer, not just not just business level, but enterprise level. Event log, this, this was interesting. So here's events that happened on Saturday. Out of range rear fan, just because they had a fan disconnected. I'm wondering if the rear fan was the, maybe that hard drive fan, because there's a, there's a power supply fan. There's a case fan in the front of the computer. The, um, that is over the CPU, and then there's that hard drive fan we saw. And then prior to that, there was, uh, let's see, post errors, because I didn't have a keyboard connected. And then before that was 2008. 
the prior event log entry was 2008. So whatever all these boot problems, there is no, right, Brian, there is no, oh, 2010. There was a keyboard disconnected July 10th, 2010, which that would have been while it was still in the law office. And then there's, there's no errors between that time. So these boot failures did not trigger an event log problem. So that's interesting. Moving on to the next picture. Fast boot is turned on. I turned off fast boot. I think the next pictures show that. I turned off fast boot because I needed to be able to get to a boot menu in order to get it to boot from the USB drive because it wasn't booting automatically off the USB drive. But you say, hey, wait a minute, Doug, if it wouldn't boot on the hard drive, why doesn't it go onto the uh, onto the um, USB drive? Well, it kicks in, it, it was trying to kick in sometimes to a diagnostic, a troubleshooting mode and run through the tests. I think I showed you, yeah, pictures of that that the client sent me. I never got to that point. There's something else wrong with the computer aside from the hard drive. Press the power button sometimes, well, actually not press the power button, connect the power and the fan just goes to 100%. Never get anything on the screen, never get to BIOS. To unplug it, plug it back in over and over. It's hit and miss to get this thing to even get into BIOS or to even get to the drive diagnostic. So I knew that if I could get anything to access the drive, I wanted to get try to get those files for uh, right away. So turning fast boot off, I thought would give me more messages, more capability to get in to get it to boot from the USB drive. Uh, post hotkeys. I don't think I have any comments there. So here's booting up. This screen does not always appear. This is power on self test. I'll, I'll call it. I'll call this the post screen. Um, it's going through this through this graph. Since I turned off the fast boot, I am seeing this. I never did see this before, but I don't know if that's just because of the luck of the draw of the inconsistent cold boot experience on this Apple Dell computer. Apple Dell, you see it right there, Apple Dell Optiplex 755. And it gives a BIOS revision number, A21. So here I get it to be able to choose onboard USB floppy drive. That's what I tried first. And I just, I, I saw it highlighted and I thought, oh, onboard or USB floppy drive. But no, that's the wrong choice. Uh, so then here's the second time around. And then I get down to USB device. Duh. Yes. That is the right choice when you're trying to go off a USB thumb drive. So here we are booted from the USB thumb drive on this computer. And I can see the C drive. Look at there. C drive. Total size. Free space. This looks very encouraging. I am booted on the Macron Reflect thumb drive and I click down here in the bottom left. You can't see it because it doesn't fit on that screen properly, but you can get a file explorer screen here. So this is exploring. This is not Macron Reflect in this window. Macron Reflect in the background. This is what you might call Windows or Apple Explorer. <laughs> um, the file explorer browser that's on this Windows PE, Apple PE <laughs> operating system. I will learn, I will learn. Apple, 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 Apple. So this looked very encouraging. At this point I should, I double clicked on this expecting to get to the file system. Now this, com this computer currently has Windows XP, not Windows Vista. The label said Windows Vista. What did someone just say about that? Came with Vista originally. Yes, that's true. It came originally with Windows Vista, but while it was in the my law office client's office, I, I'm deducing that we must have upgraded it to XP because my notes indicate it has XP, XP on it. So... That's what I had at that point. Right arrow key to go to the next photo. I When I double clicked on that C drive, it just sat there, just staring at me, just duh, I'm, I'm grouped. 
I click on it, double click on it, try to get in the file system, and it just looked at me and says, I'm grouped. So here's the C drive showing. This is looking encouraging to me at this point. I'm jazzed all over the place. I'm thinking, we're going to get this. We're going to get this. We're going to get this. And then I get my um, phantom external drive um, at, um, visible. I had to do the connect it and turn it on and then hit that refresh button to get it to be seen. Right arrow key. Here we go. We're doing an image backup. I want to <laughs> I've, um, we're doing an image backup. It's just beginning here. And it's still running. Hang on for, for a moment. Confirming audio back. Yes. So, backup is running. Next arrow key. Overall progress, image completed with warnings, 10 minutes, 9 seconds. Now remember it wasn't very, it didn't have very much very much use space. What was it? 20 gigabytes. So it's not using much space. And I see this warning, three clusters in bad sectors, data may be lost. Well, I'm thinking, what are the odds that the data that's lost is their QuickBooks company file? I think it's pretty low because they did not report that the computer crashed while they were using it. If they did, I might be worried about the company file. I'm thinking at this point, the three clusters and the bad sectors is what's preventing it from booting. That's what I'm thinking at this point and still might be the truth of the matter. Because that's the only problem reported to us at this point, other than I can't browse the C drive. So then, what does he do next? Looks here like I'm rebooting. And then, um, what am I, what's going on now? I'm hammering through the rest of the pictures. Let's see, I do, oh, this is a video. That's a one, how long is it? No, I just, I had to hold down the power button to turn, to turn off. That can't be the last picture. Is that the last picture? Really? No, it's not. That was weird. Okay, so where why won't it go to the right arrow anymore? The right arrows aren't working. Ah, clone completed. So here what I did is I cloned the drive. I must have restored that image to an SSD, I think is what I did. I didn't get enough pictures here to show what I did, did I? Copy partition, HP recovery. That drive only has two partitions. It has an MBR, um, what do you call that? Partition type or boot sector or whatever. That's the last photo. Oh, because the next things I have, I think, are video. Do I? I don't, I only work here. I don't know. You expect me to know this stuff. What's the matter for you? Um, video files. And then go look at the ones that I have. Oh, yes. Okay, so... Ah, this video is, um, oh, I know what I did is I took this um, B-Link, one of these B-Link computers, one of these guys. I restored the image to it. Let's see what will happen with that. <clears throat> So there's, um, this is, how long is this? This is 41 minutes. I hope you guys didn't have something else you had to go, go, go do. I'm going to scrub through this. We're not going to watch that whole thing, of course. And what I do, so there's the two partitions that are in that backup file. This is the backup image file. It's got these two partitions. So I want to restore those two partitions, only those two partitions. 
to the drive on this uh, B-Link computer and see what I get then. I'm not going to show all of the restore operation there. I'm just going to come up here to show you what happens. Now this is this is the BIOS for the B-Link computer. And I had to change to I changed the boot mode to legacy because I know it's a MBR partition because it was set to UEFI originally. And then I also did this read the first time I tried booting it, it didn't work. So I did the redeploy to new hardware and it couldn't find an operating system. This is once I've restored the image to the B-Link computer. I tried to tell it to configure this for new hardware. I'm suspecting that back in the days of Windows XP that that was something that was not available to do the redeploy for new hardware. So here's what's happening on the B-Link computer when I tried to boot it. And I didn't spend any time trying to resolve this. I go back to, I think, the UEFI and restore the original image back to that computer. So that's all I did with the B-Link. Now then, the next thing I do, what else can we do to drive? Does the B-Link have CSM enabled in UEFI? Does the B-Link have CSM enabled in UEFI? I, I don't know. That might be something worth looking at if I want to if I want to push it further. But I, Jim's already drinking. By the time he gets to this point in the in the video, he's going to be drinking his wine. Um, I think I'm probably not going to do that. But then here's here's the next thing that I've, that genius idea that I got. Let's put I, I copied that backup file to the. C drive a big big beast build and I'm going to try a virtual boot. See if I can boot that into the Oracle virtual box manager. Will that let me get to the files and it did uh let's see this point backup selection. This is picking that I want to use the C drive. Oh, this was just browsing. At this point I was just going to try to browse the image because I hadn't tried that yet. So here I have the image selected. I'm just trying to browse it. So I choose the C drive. This should mount it onto Big Beast Build and I can explore it using File Explorer. Assigning drive letter D, so it's gonna be the D drive on Big Beast. And D drive is not accessible. The file or directory is corrupted and unre unreadable. So I think that's those has to do with those three clusters, whatever that damage is, it's bad enough that's preventing it to be readable. And somebody speculated on, on Friday that it may be a file allocation table problem. And I'm suspecting that's probably correct. And we probably could get to the files by using some kind of a recovery program. So here I'm trying the VI boot, virtual image boot, into virtual box. And here I'm selecting the image file. This here gives us a confirmation it's MBR if you didn't already see a confirmation. And it is bootable. It's an active bootable partition. Um, will be configured to boot from image file. Okay. Scrubbing forward. I, can, I expanded this and can see the C drive partition. And then here I'm into File Explorer for Big Beast Build and I'm trying to find that D drive and it's not there. No dice. Oh, this is oh, this is where I'm determining the the file name it's going to use for the virtual computer. I got ahead of myself there. So here's it's still working on creating the virtual boot. Creating virtual machine. And here's um, Oracle Virtual Box Manager trying to start. And now I've got the play button. It's playing at normal speed right here. And it's just going into a boot loop. It's trying to boot this over and over and it's failing. And so then I, when I click the mouse, uh, it's asking me what I want to do with the mouse. And so that's that's irrelevant. You see it's still doing that boot looping in the background, failing to boot. 
not giving me any message. There's an F12 there to select boot device. I think I do use that in a moment here. Yeah, so there's, the, there's what happens when I do the F12. IDE controller showing here. Remember, this, this drive has SATA connectors, and, and somebody gave us a link on Saturday that, that showed on a, on a, I think it was on an Amazon page or another page, it, had, it was identified as SAS, but then on that same page lower, it was identified as SATA, and now it's being identified as IDE. Now, there might be something that some of you who know uh, virtual machines better than I, that some kind of other hardware support that might be able to get something out of this still. But I, I, I think I've gone far enough with this. We've, ex we've explored many different options of going down this road with this Apple computer. Scrub here further. See, what was what am I doing with an H drive? H drive unaccessible. I don't know what I was doing there. Do you take call and requests? I knew that was Ken Stout saying that. Ah, uh, because who else would do that? <clears throat> now the other possibility. The uh, we we did have a message. Well, let's see. Before I get into that, was there anything else I need to get to? Uh, did all the pictures. Oh, yeah, let's go look at uh, chat. How about that? Before I get to the other final resort. Now, I did tell I, I told you to remind me to tell you what the client said. I think I already did that. Yeah, CPA has the backup. So they're, they're planning to get the USB drive from the CPA today and get that to me. Then, oh, then, then I've gotta, we've got to go about... The CPA wants them to have a more current version of QuickBooks. So I asked them, why does the CPA uh, need that or want that? What problem are they having? Because they're not doing payroll from this. It's a 2013 version of QuickBooks. The response was, and they already knew this, that the CPA can't get support for it. Well, you never, nobody's ever going to need to call QuickBooks for support for something they're dealing with a company file. But really what that means, and I know this from my work with CPAs, they probably have an old 2013 version of QuickBooks installed on one of their computers in the office, and they're needing to upgrade their computers. And it's difficult to move that QuickBooks to the new computer, particularly if my client is their only client that's using this old version. So it really becomes a nuisance for a CPA's office to have to keep accommodating a one client that's got an old version of QuickBooks. So it's not because they actually need to call into it and get support for that but it's be more likely because they're having trouble keeping that old version of QuickBooks on their computers. Now, if they have the QuickBooks Accountant Edition, it will read a lot of obsolete versions of QuickBooks. I don't know how far back it goes, but that's something that a lot of accountants and CPAs don't want to pay for. It's really expensive. So, we're looking to get this QuickBooks company file and then get it into a currently supported version of QuickBooks, which might mean converting it into QuickBooks Online, which is a really uh, not good, not an easy conversion. And it's not, I'm sure it's not going to be able to convert a 2013 QuickBooks file. So first we have to update it to maybe a 2018 QuickBooks, maybe a 2022 QuickBooks, and then get it imported into QuickBooks Online. There are some subscription versions of QuickBooks that I think are still available, but I'm not sure about that. So it's a little bit of an unknown where we're gonna get. So next, what we're gonna do. So next question to client is what is your pressure? What is your deadline date? When do you have to have this operational? They do their invoicing once a month. It's around April 15th is their next due date. So that indicates to me they're probably going to be, um, uh, well, no, it, it, they confirm that we've got a little bit of breathing room. We have time to get the computer, figure out how we're going to deal with QuickBooks. Hang on for a moment. Confirming audio back. Okay, so pick a computer, 
figure out QuickBooks, get the company file. It was the company file that they gave to their CPA, was it before or after the March 15th invoicing? If it was before the March 15th invoicing, then they're going to have to re-enter the invoices. Now, if they invoice a regular amount or pretty stable amount, month after month, we all knew Doug was going to go going down to the rabbit hole with the drive. He just didn't want to admit it on camera on Saturday. It's probably a, um, but it's probably not going to be real difficult for them to catch up. Now, in response to Jim's com comment, we all knew Doug was going to go down the rabbit hole with the drive. Well, booting it to the the thumb drive. Ex expecting that I may be able to just copy out the company file. I'm not going to call that the rabbit hole. Doing the extra efforts beyond not being able to um, browse it using File Explorer, the things I went beyond that, I, I will accept that as, as rabbit hole. I could have stopped right there. And I did get to a point where I said, okay, I could use some kind of file... Um, file allocation table recovery utility. But then I thought, no, if they're not willing to do the $300 for uh, $300 data recovery, then no, I, I, I need, I, I've got other pressures on me. So I did, Jim, call it and say, no, I'm not gonna try any further. Jim's saying, yeah, but is he gonna still try? He still got that drive. Would Doug actually get the replacement computer, figure out QuickBooks, get the client completely set up, still have the drive in his possession, and then still try to fix the file allocation table? Place your bets. I don't know. Who's going to be the bookie for this? Who's going to, who's going to, who's going to handle the bets? Because it's not... It's not over till the fat lady sings. Okay, where am I? What next? What's I, I was going to go do some... Oh, I was telling you the rest of the stuff, story about QuickBooks. Chat room. I'm glad I don't have a show to send you off to. And by my usual Monday 10 a.m. 10 a.m. appointment, we're not doing that today. Hey, stop calling me a fat lady! <laughs> Well, Groot's just big. Groot is big. You know, on, on, the, on the Cardigans of the Galaxy movie, Groot is actually a tree. So a tree is wood, right? So Ken self-identifies as, as Groot. That's a tree. So he's a big... And now he's, he's to like 230, 234 pounds. I think he reported 234, 236 last night. Six foot four. This guy's a big guy. I'm I'm glad he's never going to be here in my in my house where he's physically within range of taking retribution on me. I am Groot. <laughs> Martin's claiming to be Groot, but but can self identifying as Groot and it's a, he's he's wood right long cylindrical cylindrical cylindri cylindrical shaft of wood. Now he doesn't. He can't make wood, right? Because the tree is wood. He's not made out of wood. He's growing. Now, as he's growing and developing, getting nutrients from the earth and getting watered, he's making wood then, right? It's not what he does, it's what he is. I'm going to go. I'm going to go backwards. Might help determine electronics of the board in case you do not have a power supply. Ken reporting 236 April Fools. No, that's what he said. All Doug. All all Doug. Good connection, connections have a spare power supply. <laughs> you can plug into this motherboard and see what happens for stability. Now, even with a hard drive oh, not in God. the machine. Oh, choke. <laughs> Uh, that's Klingon, I think. Even with a hard drive out of this computer, power on is not consistent. So there's something else with the comp computer that's wrong other than the hard drive. You're confused by my verbiage today. 
and what you're going to do and where your energy levels are to dive into this repair. Dollar expense of the time spent on doing QuickBooks upgrades. Yeah, the, the QuickBooks issue could wind up being an, an expensive piece of this. Now, I don't know if you noticed, I don't recall reading it when I was showing my notes about the computer when I set them up with this computer that came from my client. I did not charge them anything for the computer um, since it was a recycled quality computer. Let's put the winnings. Where are you sending your two cents? Are you going to use a command prompt or some tool? Um, it would be some kind of utility where I would connect the drive to another computer and run the utility from another computer if I were to go down that rabbit hole. I'd like to see you attempt to fix the MBR In files. In computer years, that system files. is 209 years old. <laughs> That's right. 209 years old and MBR, it, it, it doesn't really serve me much purpose education-wise to repair an MBR partition because MBR is just old news. We'd already seen that one. Take it back to the Apple Store. That's an option. I like that. I should video myself going into an Apple Store with this computer and say, hey, I need help with this computer. You can down and bring it to the Genius Bar. Can you help me with this? If I remember correctly, IDE is a term used by VirtualBox for serial ATA interface, which is SATA, which is the basis of IDE drives and SATA drives. So is that what would we see IDE even in with a current SATA drive with current partitions? I'm watching Wazowski. Um, all right, I'm going to read the rest of those uh, later. Um, the fans, since I, I was wondering what would happen if I if I using the Apple Fix for the fans, would this lubricate the, the fans? So that might be another rabbit hole to go down. Ken Stout says I missed his link. Where did I, where did I miss a link? I'll do control F, Ken, watching Wazowski, I'm uh, 43, Ken Stouts. Which one has a link? They're all in yellow. I'm not gonna use the arrow keys. I'm just looking for a link. Is he pulling my leg? Is this an April Fool's? There's actually no link in there. Uh, a link from Ken. How about a timestamp? Why don't you just do that? There. What is this? Oh, this is to his... Um... Yes, Ken, you were right. Are you recording right now, Ken? I am declaring you were right. Saturday show was indeed my 1,000th video. Yes, Ken, you were right. Are you recording right now, Ken? This is I Ken am declaring trailer. you were right. Saturday show he made a was indeed my 1,000th video. And as Ken does, he plays it over and over Yes, and over. Ken, you were right. Are you recording right now, Ken? I am declaring you were right. Saturday show was indeed my 1,000th video. This is this is really where I got the laugh out loud. For those of you who missed Ken Stout's trailer from his show last night, now is it. I think it's time to put this Apple tech show to bed on April the 1th, 2024. Ran Israel says, think, Doug. <laughs> that's, that's code for thank you. Or was he actually saying think since I had the apple on my head? All right, I'm out of here. Goodbye. Have a happy Monday, everybody. See you tomorrow on the Apple Daily Show.